Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Bolivian Senate approves repeal of Law 1386. Report on killing of Nigeria's anti-SARS protesters leaked. Student Workers' Union reaches tentative deal with Harvard University. And Filipino activists condemn Duterte Marcos Jr. election alliance. In our first story, the Bolivian Senate has voted to repeal Law 1386 on the national strategy to combat the legitimation of illicit profits and financing of terrorism. Also known as the Mother Law, it was abrogated by Congress early on November 16th. Opposition groups, including far-right civic committees, had launched protests against the law on November 8th. During one such protest in the Potosi Department on November 9th, a young indigenous peasant was killed. Right-wing groups claimed that the law was totalitarian and would impact unions, transport companies and informal workers. However, the government stated that the law would be used to combat activities like human and drug trafficking. Nevertheless, President Luis Arce announced on November 13th that the law would be repealed to ensure that the Bolivian economy was no longer paralyzed and there was peace. President Arce has previously accused such groups of deliberately misinforming the public in an attempt to destabilize the government. He also announced these actions as an attempt to distract from the process to bring justice to the victims of the 2019 coup. Despite Arce's initial announcement and then the official repeal of the law, the blockades continued on Tuesday. As per reports, protests were observed in Santa Cruz, Sucre, Cochabamba and Potosi. While some transport and merchant organizations have lifted the strike, the civic committees are using this opportunity to launch a broader attack against the government. They are now demanding the repeal of other laws including those considered a threat to private property. Opposition groups are also demanding the restoration of a two-thirds majority required to approve decisions. In our next story, a leak report has confirmed that the Nigerian army fired live rounds at people during the end SARS protest last year. Tens of thousands of people had taken to the streets in October 2020, demanding that the special anti-robbery squad or SARS be disbanded. The unit had been accused of corruption, extortion and serious rights abuses, including abductions and killings. Daily protests had been held for weeks leading up to the Lekki Tollgate shooting on October 20th, 2020. The Nigerian army and government denied the shooting, with one spokesperson even calling it a phantom massacre. A state commission panel was established to investigate the violence last year. The Lagos State Judicial Panel of Enquiry on restitution for victims of SARS-related abuses and other matters submitted its report on Monday. It found that the Nigerian army had shot and killed at least 11 protesters in Lekki. The report has described the incident as a massacre and has identified 48 casualties in total, with four people missing and presumed dead. Following the shooting, the report states that the soldiers turned away ambulances that had arrived to help victims. It also highlights attempts to cover up the shooting, which included police officers picking up bullets from the scene after the army had retreated. The report has made 32 recommendations, which includes action against soldiers and police and a standing human rights tribunal. The Nigerian government and army have refused to comment on the report, stating that they will wait for a white paper. In our next story, we go to the US to look at the ongoing action by student workers at Harvard University. The Harvard Graduate Students Union of the United Auto Workers held a three-day strike at the end of October. The union has 4,500 members. Among the issues raised was third-party arbitration for harassment and discrimination cases. Other demands include better pay, healthcare coverage, and an agency shop clause. As the negotiations continued with the university, the union issued a second strike notice for November 16th. However, 
Hours before the midnight strike deadline, a tentative agreement was announced between Harvard and the bargaining committee. The union then authorized two votes, including a 24-hour vote on whether the strike should continue. The Harvard Crimson newspaper reported that the union conceded two major demands in the tentative deal, which were related to third-party arbitration and majorities in discrimination cases and union security. Meanwhile, the deal offers a 5% salary hike in the first year of the contract, followed by raises of 4%, 3%, and 3% in the consecutive years. The union will have access to a $400,000 legal expense fund for Title IX or discrimination cases. However, this is a $200,000 less than what the workers demanded. A ratification vote on contract will begin on November 18th and will end on November 27th. And finally, we look at the latest developments surrounding the 2022 general elections in the Philippines. Outrage has grown against an alliance between Sara Duterte and Ferdinand Marcos Jr. Duterte is the mayor of Davao City and the daughter of the incumbent president Rodrigo Duterte. She is from the Laka CMD party and will run for vice president. Meanwhile, Marcos Jr., who is the son of former dictator Ferdinand Marcos, will contest for the post of the president. He is a member of the Federal Party of the Philippines or the PFP. Opinion polls have projected both candidates as the most popular. Both have supported the current administration's policies, including the brutal war on drugs, which is estimated to have killed tens of thousands of people. Marcos Jr. has promised that if elected, he will grant Duterte immunity from prosecution. His own father's regime was marked by at least 3,200 extrajudicial killings. The Duterte Marcos Jr. alliance poses a challenge for the divided centrist and progressive opposition. Social movements and indigenous groups have been protesting this alliance. A petition calling for Marcos Jr.'s disqualification was filed by activists and survivors of the dictatorship on November 17th. A similar petition was filed earlier this month and it will be heard in the court next week. Both argue that Marcos Jr.'s 1995 conviction for tax offences disqualifies him from the election under Philippines law. Despite the standing conviction, Marcos Jr. served both in the parliament and as governor. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.